Ladakh. The very mention of this name evokes images of craggy peaks, deep gorges and icy blue waters. Within this beautiful land lies Zanskar, which gets its name from the Tibetan word Zan, meaning copper. Legend has it that the valley was formed when Guru Padmasambhava slew a demon, whose fall formed this region. Even in the most pleasant of seasons, life here is difficult. But winter gives this word a whole new meaning. Snow blocks the mountain passes that connects it with the rest of the world. Leaving it isolated for nearly four months. There is but one unlikely trade route that ironically becomes operational during the harshest days of winter. For a short period, during January and February, the Zanskar River freezes over and pulls a white sheet of ice over itself. This lifeline of Zanskar is evocatively called Chadar. Much of Zanskar is mountainous. Whatever land is available for agriculture yields little during the short summer months. Thus, Zanskaris are dependent on supplies from elsewhere. For centuries, they have trekked over this icy road, if it can be called one, to trade supplies. The one-way journey is often more than a hundred kilometers and takes nearly a week. And today, this very trade route Hello. has become a magnet for adventure seekers from around the world. And so, on one cold January morning in Leh, our unlikely group of trekkers was welcomed at the hotel by Stani Wangchuk, who had organized the Chadar trip for us. Amidst laughter and jokes, clothing and gear was handed out, tried, fitted. The excitement of the forthcoming adventure was palpable. Been like you know waiting for this for a couple of years. I think you know better than me. But I think it's a brilliant opportunity. The chadar requires immense preparation, given the fact that you are at 14,000 feet, and the ambient temperature is 30 degrees below freezing. The rarefied air results in low oxygen intake. Acclimatization is an absolute must. Having an experienced person organizing is paramount, as the entire route has no habitation in winters and all supplies have to be carried. The nearest medical help is a few days away. We are going to walk up to Shanches to first stop. Stanley had an interesting idea of how we should acclimatize. We pulled our sleds to Shanti Stupa, one of the highest spots in Leh to find our snow legs. It was fun getting ready for the serious business. Ah, an orange dawn broke over the snow-capped peaks and it was time to hit the road. A couple of hours later, we reached Chile, where we had our first glimpse of the famous Chadar. The name could not have been more apt. From our vantage point on the road, it was as if someone had draped a white sheet over the river. We struggled to find adjectives to describe the site.
we clambered down the steep edges and gingerly took our first steps on the ice. While hearing the first crunch underneath our boots. When you are walking on the frozen river, so there you can be dangerous of slippery because of the ice very smooth. So Our guide Pasang gave us a thorough safety briefing, uh, clearly establishing no, who the boss was. Is, we uh, were taught to, to take every ice. step carefully uh, while uh, testing the surface ahead so, with our sticks. Be, so today we will walk five hours. Uh, our camp should be and in then, the Markala. With a cry invoking the gods for safety and luck. We were off. Walking along in a single file, we marveled at the stark beauty of the place. The sun was up and the mood was jovial. Jokes and banter being traded up and down the fire. But underlying the light mood, there was a sense of nervousness. The experience of walking across the frozen river was unlike anything we had done before. Nothing can really prepare you for this. After a couple of hours, we broke for lunch. Instant Korean noodles, but the warmth with which it was served and shared on the rocks made it one of the best meals of our lives. And after lunch, we set off again. At places, one could still see where the river hadn't frozen. We could see ice flows disappearing beneath the sheet. Reminding us of the dangers inches below our boots. Pasang was a good and patient teacher leading us and pointing out the signs that gave away the weak ice. At places where the ice was too thin to walk on, we had to climb onto the valley slopes to get across. At other places, the path was too narrow and we squeezed under the overhangs. It was exhausting work. Every step, a monumental effort. Walking on ice puts intense strain on your calves and thighs. Your boots never get a good grip. And a moment's lapse of concentration and you're on your back, looking up at the sky. As the sun dipped towards the horizon, we came upon the welcome sight of tents pitched and a hot meal being cooked. Safe from the icy winds of the night, the heartwarming food along with the singing and merriment made us forget our aching legs. A pedometer carried by the data fiend Ajay Sood informed us 
that we had walked 11.5 kilometers in a little over 5 hours and taken 15,500 steps. The night passed in a jiffy. At the crack of dawn, the camp started humming with life again. The new day had brought with it a surprise. Instead of warm sunshine, there was snow. Despite the grey gloom, the first day's adventures had us craving for more. Last three days we had lovely weather, two days in Leh, yeah. as well as the first day in the trek. As Sani said yesterday, today hopefully we're going to get some little bit of the snowfall, snowflakes. So let's enjoy this weather also. I think we're going to trek on the snow, so another excitement day. Let's see what's in store and look forward to a great day like yesterday. It's a new experience for you see it. It's snowing all the day. So after after afternoon we will know the weather is good or bad. So if snowing all the days and all the nights, then must be we have to cancellation our trip to back to Leh. Otherwise it's very dangerous of avalanche in the Zanskar area. So it can be blocked the rivers and it's very difficult to walk on the ice. Right, so the weather is a little bit A few minutes later, we came upon this awesome sight. Wow, awesome. It was as if the cold had frozen time. Standing there, I got a sense of how time, insignificant and ant-like we were. It was hard to imagine how anything could survive out there. Yet, there were signs of life everywhere. Dippers dived in the icy waters. While big black ravens soared overhead. And ibex roamed the slopes with the grace of a gymnast. With each passing step, our spirits soar <laughs> to the extent that Vijayanth decided it was time for some sculpture, a drunk man sculpture to be precise. And that had everyone roaring with laughter. <laughs> the shadows were lengthening by the time we reached This was our turnaround point and we would be heading back in the morning. Mr. Pedometer informed us that we had walked nearly 18 kilometers in 27,000 steps that day. While we crawled into the comfort of our sleeping bags in our tents, the hardy Zanskaris preferred the shallow caves along the side of the gorge. It was unbelievable given the temperature outside. Though we were returning the same way we came, the weather and the ever-changing surface conditions meant we would be experiencing a completely different landscape. Soon we came across a patch of glassy ice and an impromptu competition broke out to see 
who could skate the farthest. It was a wonderful sight, seeing laughter and fun in such a harsh environment. <laughs> it was perhaps the warmth of human relationships and bonding that rose above it all and brought us together. The best part of the trip. Where are you We're just standing right in between the gorge. It's completely frozen and there's water underneath flowing, you know, which is just a bit away and uh, not that far. So looking at that side, you need some guts to stand here and people who don't know, obviously they'll be a bit skeptical to stand here as well. Like, But brilliant, this is awesome man, this is amazing. As we headed out towards Leh, we came across Zanskaris heading deeper into the gorge, having picked up supplies in Leh. What had been an adventure of a lifetime for us was a hard way of life for these people. Just as we experienced a few moments later, when we felt the ice give way, our sleds were getting stuck as well. On our final night on the chadar, our support team enthralled us with ballads of love and adventure that echoed deep in the valley. And then, before we knew it, it was time to say goodbye. Before starting the trek, we were all wondering if we would really be able to finish it. And now, four days had simply whizzed by. It was all due to the support of these hardy men, who had become friends forever. The Zanskari Chadar had truly been the highest point in our lives. Slow motion. 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 Slow mot